Hey everybody, uh, this is going to be something a little different than anything I've ever really done here on YouTube before. Uh, it never really seemed like the right thing to do for my history channel, but this seems like the kind of place to share this story. I've never really shared my full story before when it comes to a, a big part of who I am, and that's the story of finding out who my father was. Uh, it's going to take a little while, so bear with me. And my, my purpose in sharing this story uh, is not to ask anybody to feel sorry for me or to have sympathy for me because there's nothing to feel sorry for. I've had an amazing life so far. I've, I have an amazing family, and I wouldn't trade the family that I have for anything. Uh, so I'm very content with my life. And I don't share this for any of those reasons other than to give some people hope, first of all, uh, and maybe to let some people know that Maybe you're not alone if you've had a similar story to mine. Uh, so here we go. This is my story. So first, a little bit of background. I was born in 1977, the day after my mom's 17th birthday. By the time my mom was 20 years old, she had remarried to the man who was my stepfather, Dave, uh, who from my earliest memories had always been my father. I called him dad. Uh, I didn't know any different. I thought he was my dad. I had no reason to think he wasn't. I had his last name and everything. It was only as I got a little bit older, and I think I was seven or eight years old, um, and I wondered why um, he was listed as stepfather on some intake forms for a hospital visit that I made. And I started to realize that something was a little different for me than for my sister, who was Dave's daughter. Uh, when I was eight years old, my mom left and I went to live with my maternal grandparents. And so I never really had an opportunity to have a conversation with my mom about my background, about my, my parentage. Um, my grandparents were only in their 30s when I was born. My grandma was 34, my gran grandpa was 38. And so most people that I knew called my grandparents, my mom and dad, and I never corrected them because as far as I was concerned, that's who they were. They were my parents. Uh, my uncles were my brothers. Uh, my youngest uh, uncle, the one who just passed away last fall, was only six years older than me. Uh, it was my senior year of high school, when I was 17 years old, that I began what has become a lifelong obsession for me, which is the study of my family history. And by this point, my mom had actually moved back home uh, to Ohio, and so it wasn't long before this combination of my mom back at home and me being interested in my family background that led me to the question, who's my father? And my mom put me off for a few days, but she said, we'll talk about it. And so we sat down and we finally had that talk where she told me the identity of the man that she was sure was my biological father. The crazy part was I knew the guy. I uh, had gotten my first job at 16 at a place called Good and Plenty Pizza, which was right down the street from my house. And the guy that she said was my father was a guy who came in every uh, Wednesday night as a part of this group of guys who were into uh, old cars and stuff like that. And so I knew him. I served him food all the time. And I had no reason to believe that she was making it up or that she was wrong. Uh, so I began attempts to contact this guy. At one point, I actually wrote him a letter and sent pictures of him and said, hey, I'm your son, and uh, never heard a thing. A couple years go by, and one night, his eldest son gives me a call. And I hear him on the phone, and his voice very similar to mine, and he introduced himself as my brother. He said, you know, I, my dad told me about all this stuff, and he said it's not true, but I think it probably is. And uh, he told me that our, his father had shown him the letter that I wrote and insisted that I was wrong, that that the timeline was off, and that he had broken up with my mom before she got pregnant. And uh, But nevertheless, this guy believed that he was probably my brother, and so we figured out a time to meet, and we sat down together and talked, and we had a great chat. Uh, and for as, as far as I was concerned, I had met my brother for the first time, and eventually, hopefully, I'd meet my father as well. And over the next 10 years, I lived my life believing this man was my father and this guy was my brother. I went on research trips to Tennessee, tracing my family tree through that line that I believed was my paternal line. I even went to the funeral of the woman that I believed was my grandmother. Uh, that was my life. All the while, in the back of my mind, I'm wondering, 
why doesn't this guy just acknowledge I'm his son? What's going on here? Is it really true? And it was only an advance in DNA technology that started to help me get the answers. And it led me down a very different path. About 10 years ago, uh, actually it's been longer than 10 years ago now, it's been, gosh, uh, about 15 years ago, Ancestry.com started offering what was called a Y chromosome DNA test. Now the markers in your Y chromosome DNA are only passed down through the male line. And so that means that my father's father's father has the same Y chromosome DNA that I have. And any other direct male line descendants of that man are going to have the same DNA. So my father's father's father, any other sons and grandsons and great grandsons, direct male line are going to have the same Y chromosome. Now, I knew several of the male members of my suspected father's family, and I was good friends with some of them. And so I asked one of my suspected father's male cousins to do a Y chromosome DNA test, and I did one. And we submitted them. They weren't even close. The man could not possibly be my father. So there I was, 30 years old, completely clueless about who the identity of my father was, and honestly, pretty much hopeless that I was ever going to find out. My mom had moved away. Um, Long story that I'll get into another time. I didn't really have an opportunity to talk to her about it. But about a year after I did that test, I got a match on Ancestry.com for two other people who shared the same Y chromosome DNA. The crazy thing was they were in eastern Kentucky. They were both direct male line descendants of a man named David Snowden Jr. who had settled in eastern Kentucky after the Revolutionary War. Now here's what's crazy about that. My maternal line goes through eastern Kentucky. My mom's uh, grand, my mom's father, the, the man who raised me, the only father I had really known growing up, um, was from Kentucky. And so here now I'm finding out that my male line is from Kentucky too. It was crazy. But it made a little bit of sense because the, the place where I live in Northeast Ohio, uh, I live very close to the town of Niles, Ohio, which is where my, grand, my maternal grandfather grew up. Um, and Niles has a ton of of Kentucky roots because there's a fire brick company, the Niles Fire Brick Company, that actively recruited workers from a brickyard in a town called Olive Hill, Kentucky. And so there are literally thousands of people uh, in my area in Northeast Ohio who have Eastern Kentucky roots. So it wasn't a big stretch, but it did narrow down the potential pool of people who could be my father to people with the last name of Snowden whose roots were in Eastern Kentucky. So now I had my first clue to who my father was. So now the detective work begins. I I started by knowing that my father's family had probably been part of that same mass migration from Kentucky uh, to Northeast Ohio in the 1930s and 1940s. And soon enough, I discovered there was one family of Snowdens who came from Eastern Kentucky and settled in our area. And in fact, they had actually lived as neighbors to my maternal grandfather in the Niles Fire Brick Company homes. So I was already on to something. And I traced that family back to that same David Snowden Jr. that the other Y chromosome matches had also traced their line back to. And it it turned out there were in fact only four men who could possibly have been my biological father. There was a man and his brother who were my grandpa's age. And then the one man had two sons who both happened to go to my mom's high school. One was the same age as my mom and one was a couple years older. So as far as I was concerned, it had to be one of those two brothers that went to my mom's high school. So I focused on those two sons. So through some internet searching, I found an email address for the older of those two brothers. I sent him a message, explained the situation. Uh, told him what was going on, asked him if he knew my mom. He said he remembered my mom from high school, but that she was actually closer to his younger brother's age, and I should probably reach out to the younger brother. So that's what I did. 
wasn't so easy to find that younger brother. But in my process of asking questions and reaching out, that brother got word about my search. And late one night, he called me. I don't know how he got my number. I don't even remember the details of it. But he told me, yeah, it's possible I could be your biological father. And he agreed to a paternity test that would confirm it. I knew. I knew I had finally found my dad. And it took some time to get the test done. A uh, couple of weeks go by as I'm waiting for the test results to come in. You can imagine how agonizing that was as I'm sitting there just waiting for what I knew was going to be a positive test. This guy said he, he could be my father. He was sure that it was possible and uh, after 30 years of not knowing who my father was of asking questions and wondering I was sitting in my office at the church on a Wednesday morning when I got the email that the results had come in he was not my father I was devastated I was sure this guy was my father he was wet, ready and willing to acknowledge that he was my father it was all going to be figured out. It was all making sense. Everything made sense. The Y DNA matched. So I knew that my father was a part of that family. This man acknowledged he could be my father. How could he not be? Now, once I'd gotten over the shock of those results, I remembered the phone conversation I had with the man who had just failed the paternity test. I told him the the name of the man that my mother had told me was my biological father that I had believed was my father for years. And he, he said something that at the time didn't make a lot of sense to me, but now in hindsight, as I thought about it, it came back into my mind. And he said, yeah, I remember him. He said, I remember my older brother getting into a fight with him over your mom. Oh, wait a second. The older brother, the one who had said, oh, yeah, I remember your mom, but he was, he was my brother's age. Why would he have gotten into a fight with my mom's ex-boyfriend over my mom? A man that she had broken up with just weeks before I was conceived. Now it was starting to make a little more sense to me. Maybe it was the older brother, after all. After speaking with my mom, who was, let's just say my mom was less than upfront about her life. Now, this is a story for another day, and I love my mom with all my heart, and I would do anything for her. Um, my mom, as a teenager, dealt with a lot, and there were some things in her life that are not for me to share uh, that she went through in her younger, younger time, uh, her younger years that led her by the time she was a teenager to um, make some really bad choices, let's say. And among those bad choices was a tendency as a teenager to be rather promiscuous to the point where well, she wasn't really willing to just be upfront and acknowledge that there was more than one possibility of who could be my father. And I'm not passing judgment on my mother. Um, as I said, I, I love my mom, and we all make bad decisions when we're teenagers. We all make them as adults. Um, what's done is done, and it's in the past, and I, I don't hold any of that against her. Um, but she acknowledged, okay, you know what? The older brother's a possibility, too. So there I was, back to square one, back to another possibility about who my father was. But the problem, it seemed, was that the older brother wasn't nearly as interested in volunteering to take a paternity test as the younger brother had been, or even acknowledging the possibility that he could be my father. And so my search was stuck. It was at a standstill. There was nowhere to go without him being willing to take that test. And so a few years go by, with nothing, no new breakthroughs, no possibilities. But Ancestry DNA started offering a new test, the one that they have to this day. It's called an autosomal DNA test. 
Now, unlike the Y chromosome DNA test, which only can check your male line directly, autosomal tests can check all of your lines of DNA and can compare that DNA to other people who have taken the test. And based on the shared amount of what are called centimorgans of DNA, which are chains of common DNA, it's a lot to get into, it's all very technical, but it can estimate how closely you are related to another person. And so if you share a certain amount of centimorgans with a person, it can estimate, okay, this person's your aunt or uncle, this person's your half brother, this person's your full sibling, this person's probably a grandparent, this person's a first cousin once removed, whatever it might be. And so a few years ago, I took an autosomal DNA test, hoping that it would show me some close relatives that would help me narrow down some possibilities. And boy, did I ever find those possibilities. Immediately, I was able to get a better picture of my paternity. Because remember, though always pretty unlikely, there was always the possibility that the man who had taken the paternity test and failed, that his brother could be my father, but his father could also be my father, as could have his uncle, his father's brother, since they all also shared Y chromosome DNA with me. But I was very quickly able to rule out uh, the father and uncle of the man who had taken the paternity test because I started getting all of these matches for people through that man's mother's side as well. And so that meant that not only was I related to the father of these two brothers that went to school with my mom, I was also related to their mother. So now there were only two people on the entire planet who carried the Y DNA that could have been passed down to me as father and son. This man who had just failed the paternity test and his brother. Now through this whole process, I had actually gotten to know the sister to these two brothers that had gone to school with my mom and uh, found out she was willing to take an autosomal DNA test to see if there was any match, any relationship at all between me and her. Now, by this point, I've been through a Y chromosome DNA test that showed me I was wrong about who my father was once. I had been through a paternity test that once again disappointed and told me I was wrong about who I thought my father was. And so this is really about the last chance I had to get any answers. And she agreed to do the test. We got together at a Panera, had her do the test. We put it in the mail and sent it out. And then the waiting game began again. Weeks go by. I think it was five or six weeks, something like that. And you can just, I mean, I'm almost 40 years old by this point. I'm just waiting on pins and needles for an answer and i've been through disappointment so many times and so i finally got the email right before dinner time one day that the results were in i told everybody in the family i sat down my daughter who was like 12 years old at the time she came over and she sat next to me and she grabbed my arm she knew what a big deal this was for me i opened it up she was my aunt 40 years of not knowing, and I finally knew. The oldest brother was my father. Took a little time to process, but you know, I, I had waited this long. I had thought through every scenario. I knew exactly how I wanted to handle this. I had already talked to the guy, had his email. So I sent him an email. Showed him all the proof, laid out the whole story as I've just laid it out for all of you. And he basically blew me off. Started giving me all these excuses about why the test was wrong and how it wasn't possible. And I won't get into too much of some of the stuff he said, but honestly, it was very, very disappointing, let's say how he chose to respond to it all. And uh, so that meant not only was I I'm not really going to have a chance to get to know my dad, but there were also these three brothers that I had out there, three younger brothers that I had known a little something about by this point. And, um, 
found a couple of them on Facebook, saw the similarities we had in appearance, even though we were half brothers. There, there was definitely a lot of similarities there, and I'd had by that point people in the family tell me how one of the sons in particular and I looked a lot alike. So, ended up having a, a phone conversation with the guy, and he was very friendly on the phone to me. But through email, he basically was like, Leave me alone, you're nuts, I'm not your dad, go away. Not how I'd hoped it would go. You know, uh, there's this TV show out there um, where they use ancestry DNA to reunite people, parents, and their long-lost children. And I think it's called Long Lost Family and story after story of these happy endings. Mine wasn't like that. Mine doesn't have a happy ending. Um, I ended up reaching out to one of the brothers who was very cool about it said hey let's get together and so me and two of my brothers met the next day at a Perkins had a great conversation that was the one and only time I got to meet my youngest brother he lives with my dad I haven't haven't seen or talked to him since I've never met the middle brother actually I take that back I met him once we worked together briefly doing um, doing AT&T tech support for iPhones. We worked at the same place. I knew he was my brother. He had no clue I was his brother. I went over and said hi to him, shook his hand, and that's the only time I've ever met him, even though he only lives a few miles away from me. The, the other brother of those three is awesome. We've had a chance to meet. He lives in Alaska. Uh, so we haven't really been able to get close, get to know each other because of the distance. But I, I got to go to his house. I got to meet his kids. His kids are awesome. Uh, he's got three kids and um, very cool. And he and I actually have a lot in common. We're the same height. We, we actually look really similar. And um, here's, here's one of the crazy things about all this. And this is a little off the topic. But, you know, you ever wonder how some certain things about your life, are they inherited through DNA or are they things that you get because you were raised by a person. Well, I was not raised by my father. I've never met my father, even though I know who he is and he lives locally. I come to find out that he was really into history in high school. He ran track and cross country in high school. I ran track and cross country in high school. Nobody in my maternal line on my mother's side, nobody in my mom's family does that. But my dad did. And somehow I ended up doing the same thing. Found out he was on the school board at the school. Right out of high school, he got elected to the school board. Really into politics, just like I am. So a lot of those things, you know, just can't be explained that way. And it's kind of cool. Uh, he and his wife are really into genealogy, as I am. Um, so I never got to meet him, but I did get to know one of my brothers a little bit. And I still hold out hope I'll get to know the other two as time goes on. Um, I've met members of the extended family. Unfortunately, two years ago, my paternal grandfather uh, died from lung cancer. I never got to meet him, and that's been hard for me. It's been hard to know that I was deprived of that relationship and that my paternal grandfather died without ever knowing I existed. My grandma's still alive. I got to meet her once, but... She didn't know who I was, and I didn't know for sure at the time if she was my grandmother. I hold out hope that'll change someday, but I'm not optimistic about that. Um, the fact that I've been very open about this whole story, about my story, has rubbed some people in that family the wrong way, including the aunt who did the DNA test, who has since defriended me on Facebook and, and basically turned her back on me as well because I was so open and honest about the fact that I was a part of that family. Um, I get it. And listen, I don't blame my father for something that happened uh, when he was in high school. The fact that he never knew I existed is also not his fault. That's on my mom. And again, I don't hold her responsible for that. And listen, 
I don't share any of this to say that, oh, woe is me. I grew up without a dad. I didn't grow up without a dad. My grandfather was the best father I could have asked for. Uh, I didn't miss out on anything. I had an amazing family growing up, and I'm so grateful for the family that I have. Uh, and, and I am determined to be the best father that I can be to my children so they never have to know what it's like to grow up without dad in their life, without a dad who loves them and would do anything for them. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to set that right and to change that story for my kids. I wish it was different. I really do. I, I wish my dad felt differently about all this. I wish I knew my grandma. I wish that I got to see my brothers more often. I will never stop hoping that changes. It probably won't. And I've accepted that. And I acknowledge that. But here's one of the cool things that has happened because of all of that. Because of my experience, because of the knowledge that I gained in how DNA works, and how to interpret DNA and how to figure out relationships and autosomal DNA and centimorgans and all that stuff like that. I've had the opportunity twice now to help other people find out who their parents were, their biological parents, because of the knowledge that I gained in my own story. People that I was related to, that I ended up being able to find out exactly who their parents were. And in both of those cases, it went differently. They were able to connect with their parents and they were able to have the story that I never got. So maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I'm in this position. And if you're in that situation and you've got questions and you've never been able to figure out who your family is, let me know and I'll do what I can to help. Even if it's just offering advice, even if it's just letting you know how I dealt with all of this, I want to help. I want to use this thing that's been a negative in my life and turn it into positive for someone else. So I share this story to let you know that it's okay. It's okay to have those questions. It's okay to pursue answers and be okay with it not turning out the way that you hoped. I'm okay with it. I'm blessed. I'm incredibly blessed. I wouldn't trade my life for anything. Is it perfect? No. Is it the way I wanted it to go? No. And do I still hope it will change? Yeah. And if you're a praying person, I would invite you to pray that those things change in my life, that I have that opportunity to get to know my grandmother, that I have the opportunity to get to know my father. And if it doesn't, I'm okay with that. And I'm going to be the best dad and husband I can possibly be. And I will be forever grateful for the family I have. So thanks for letting me have this chance to share that story with you. And like I said, if you've got questions and you need guidance, reach out to me. Uh, vlogging through history at gmail.com. I'll put my contact info in the link below if you want to reach out. And I'll do all I can to help you out. Thanks for checking this out.